Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Tobias and in today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys an unboxing of the Monocaster C2 Neo podcasting console and I'm also going to be testing it out in front of you. By the way, the audio that you're hearing right now is coming from the C2 Neo. I actually recorded the unboxing yesterday and between then and now, I've spent some time becoming familiar with this podcasting console so I could make this video. By the way, I'll go ahead and put the link to the C2 Neo down in the description of this video in case you would like to check that out for yourself. It goes for $59.99. And right now I'll go ahead and roll the unboxing for you guys. As you can see, it comes with a user manual, a USB-A to USB-C cable, and a 3.5 millimeter TRRS to TRRS aux cable. If we take a look at the back of the console, we'll see that there is a power button, and next to that there is a USB-C charging port. So you do actually need to charge the C2neo, and if it does run out of battery, it will just turn off. So I do think that this is meant to be more of a portable podcasting console. And next to that, there is another USB-C port, which you will want to use to connect to your computer or whatever device you choose to stream or record to. And I should mention that this port does not supply power to the C2neo. It gets power only from the battery and charging port. And next is the line out port, which can be used to stream or record to a device like a smartphone or a tablet using the included TRRS cable. And the headphone jack next to that can be used to monitor your audio, which I'm actually doing right now. Then we have the aux input, which you can use to connect your smartphone or tablet, so you can play music through the Monocaster C2 Neo. And finally, next to that, we have the XLR input, which is where you will plug in your mic. And if we take a look at the front of the console, we'll see that the C2neo actually does supply phantom power, which you can turn on or off by pushing the button that says 48 volts on it. And above that, we have the volume fader for the microphone. And above that, there is a knob which you can turn to adjust the mic gain. To the right of the mic gain, we have an aux knob, which can be used to adjust the volume of whatever you happen to have plugged into the aux input. And if you are playing music through the C2neo via Bluetooth, it will also control the volume of that. And you can turn Bluetooth on or off by long pressing the BT button right next to the phantom power button. Next to the Bluetooth button, there is a button for reverb presets. And you can push that button to cycle through the six reverb presets, which I'll go ahead and show you guys right now. So right now I do not have any reverb on my voice. This is the original reverb preset. This, this is, is the, the karaoke, karaoke reverb preset. This is the church reverb preset. This is the hall reverb preset. This is the valley reverb preset. This is the room reverb preset. And now I turned off the reverb by pushing the pitch preset button. When you push that button, there will be no effects on your voice. Next, we have the sidechain button. The sidechain button will automatically lower the volume level of any music that you might have playing when it senses that you're speaking into your microphone. And I'll go ahead and demonstrate that for you guys right now. So I have my phone connected via Bluetooth and I'll go ahead and play a song. I've been drinking and it just feels right today. And right now I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the sidechain. Right now I have sidechain on and as you just heard, um, it uh, automatically lowered the volume level, and I'm going to go ahead and turn the music down a little bit because it is a little loud, and right now I'm going to go ahead and pause the music. And if you long press the sidechain button, it will turn pink, and this setting will attempt to remove the vocals from a song you're playing. So I'm going to go ahead and play that song again, and I'll hold the sidechain button, and let's see how it sounds when it tries to remove the vocals. Me out. Now the doors so right now it's attempting to remove the vocals from the music and this is how it sounds without that So that's what that setting does. I think it's meant for when you're doing karaoke or something like that. And as you saw, it was also lowering the volume of my music when I was speaking. And while the button is pink, if you go ahead and short press it again, the button will turn red. And that will also try to remove the vocals from the song that you're playing, but it will not lower the volume of the music when you're speaking into the microphone. So let me just go ahead and demonstrate that for you guys. So I'm gonna play the song. And as you can see, 
it's not lowering the volume of the music when I'm speaking. And right now I turned the sidechain off completely. So hopefully that gives you an idea of what the sidechain button does. Next, we have the direct monitor button. This allows you to switch between different kinds of microphone monitoring. When the button is turned off, you will not hear your microphone in your headphones. You can turn on direct monitoring by pressing the button. The light will turn red and you'll be able to hear yourself in your headphones. If you long press the button, it will turn pink and this will turn on loopback monitoring, which is the same thing as software monitoring. And in this setting, you will also have the direct monitoring in conjunction with the software monitoring. For example, if you're recording to GarageBand on your laptop and you put a distortion track on your audio track in GarageBand, when you have the loopback monitoring on, you will actually hear that distortion effect in your headphones. If you only have the direct monitoring on, you wouldn't hear that effect. If you short press the button again while it's pink, it will turn blue. This will turn off the direct monitoring and only keep the loopback monitoring. The next button next to that controls different pitch preset effects. So I'm just going to go ahead and run through those quickly for you guys. So right now I have no pitch effects on my voice. I'm going to go ahead and press the button. This is the female setting. This is the male setting. This is the baby setting. This is the robot setting. And we're back to my normal voice. And the button next to that is the noise reducer button. And this button is mostly a noise gate. And when you push the button and it turns red, that will be the low setting, which is basically a less aggressive noise gate. And when you press the button again, it will turn pink. And this is a more aggressive noise gate. Then to the right of that, we have the A, B, and C sound pads. And these can be used to record your own custom audio samples. And you can record these samples however you want to. I recorded one custom sample just using my voice and the microphone. And I recorded two other samples using my iPhone via Bluetooth with some samples that I found on YouTube. So so first what you need to do is you need to hold one of the buttons for a few seconds to make the light blink fast and this will clear the pad so you can now record your own sample. Then you can go ahead and press the pad and the light will blink slowly as you record your sample and to stop the recording you can press the button again. And here are the ones that I recorded. The first one is just my voice. Hello, my name is Tobias and this is a custom recorded sample. And the next two I recorded with my iPhone via Bluetooth. And these are just little audio clips that I found on YouTube. It's kind of like a dreamy effect. And then I have this next effect that's kind of like a dramatic effect. And then finally, we have the large knob in the middle of the Monocaster C2 Neo, which controls your USB and line outputs, which basically just means you're controlling the audio volume of the signal that you're recording into your computer or your tablet or whatever you're using. And it's a good idea to keep an eye of the volume levels in your recording or streaming software to make sure that your audio levels aren't clipping. And it's probably also a good idea to keep an eye on your volume levels on the Monocaster itself and make sure you're not going into the red because that could cause your audio to sound distorted. And then of course we have the last fader on the right hand side of the Monocaster C2 Neo, which is used to control the volume of your headphones. And now I'm just going to share the settings with you guys that I think will help you get the best quality audio from this device. And these are the settings that I'm personally using to record this video. So the first thing I would do is I would turn on the low noise reducer setting, which means just go ahead and press the noise reducer button until the light goes red. That is the low setting. Next, I would recommend turning your mic gain up kind of high and also bring up your mic volume kind of high. But of course, you don't want to be clipping and the audio meter to the right of that fader. Make sure you're not clipping, but I would turn it up kind of high. You just don't want to go into the red. And when you're speaking into the microphone, I would recommend getting pretty close to the microphone. As you can see right now, I'm only a couple inches away from the microphone as I'm speaking. Because if you are too far, the noise reduction feature may cut the beginning or ends of your words off a little. Now, the mic gain and volume settings will vary from microphone to microphone. Personally, right now, I'm using the Mono PD200X, which is a dynamic 
microphone and it does not require phantom power. But if you're using a condenser microphone, you probably won't need your mic gain to be that high. And maybe you won't need to be as close to the microphone either. You just kind of have to mess around with the mic placement and volume and gain until you get a pretty good sound. Because a condenser microphone will be much more sensitive than a dynamic microphone like the one that I'm using. So anyways guys, that's pretty much it when it comes to the Monocaster C2 Neo. Feel free to let me know what you guys think about it down in the comments below. And if you have any questions, let me know in the comments as well. I'll try my best to help you out. And of course, as usual, if you did like this video or if it helped you out, I'd appreciate it if you went down there and gave this video a like that would help me out so much if you would like to see more videos by me in the future make sure to hit that subscribe button and also that bell notifications button and i'll talk to you guys in my next video peace